somehow. We should have full volume now, damn it. Oh well, two weeks in a row we started at 9 08. Blame it on nine, new things. And two weeks in a row. We two started weeks in a row we start with audio issues. Let's go. Anyway, let's go. Episode two, guys, of the Crackle Back Bound <laughs> campaign. Before we get into the session tonight, just a few quick things. As as always, um, if you guys want to see your usernames pop up within the world of Hylum, uh, make sure you share Tales from Hylum content. Uh, to be fair, I haven't put out anything new recently because uh, I've been working on uh, getting back to the um, Lands of Before campaign and uh, getting this one started. But now that this one's underway and the other one is coming back this Sunday at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, um, you know, I'll, I'll actually have time to like sit down and make content and uh, post to the TikTok, Twitter. I'll try to get better about posting to Twitter and Instagram. I'm horrible about it. I don't social media. But um, I, even if it's just re-uploading the TikToks to Instagram and Twitter, there will be something. So um, anyway, yeah, if you guys want to see your names end up within the world of Hylum, make sure you guys share Tales from Hylum content. Uh, use the hashtags TFH and Tales from Hylum. And then tag us in it so that we know that um, so that we know you've done it and we can I can be like, oh, that's a cool name. It's going in the world. You're a tavern now. Kind of a thing. Um, if you want to be more directly involved, make sure you guys join the Discord so you can see when the opportunity arises to jump in a community one shot. Um, or possibly a mini series, depending on how ambitious I want to get with it. So please feel free to hop in the Discord at any point in time. And now for the big announcement. As of, I've been waiting for. as of 27 minutes ago, everyone, the merch store for Tales from Hylum is live. So if you guys want to get t-shirts, if you guys want to get beanies, if you want to get a trucker hat, if you want to get a snap bag to represent wear around rep good old tales from hylum you absolutely can it's tales from hylum.com go check it out um it's also got it's got our youtube on there so if you aren't subbed to the youtube it makes it real easy you're sitting on there cruising for merch you can go oh there's the youtube boom and it's also got the tiktok on there so same thing um i i have not tried it out on mobile so i don't know how well the website works on mobile but it's um uh, it is a website, not any sort of application, unfortunately. So um, it should work just like every other website works on mobile, but I haven't tried it out to see how mobile friendly it is. Um, but as far you as desktop, old man calling it an application. Is, it not, is that not what it's called anymore? <laughs> well, know, it is. Everyone I, just I calls it an app. I, so. <laughs> I always call them apps, like oh, not okay. applications. <laughs> It just took me a minute to be like, application? What? Oh, okay, I see what you mean. My bad. Uh, <laughs> no, no, it's okay. It's your download to your phone. <laughs> the app. Excuse my old ass. Um, I mean, you. I do get called Grandpa quite a bit in the other campaign, so it makes sense. Um, but anyway, yeah, go go check it out. See what we've got. Um, I'm very excited about it. We've got our uh, Tales from Hylum uh pride line until the end of july we only started uh, we didn't start at like the end of june unfortunately but i was like well i want to leave the pride stuff up there longer than just a week so it's going to be there through the end of july and then um uh, you know we'll bring it back for some special occasions and stuff but we've got stickers we've got we have water bottles we've got we got it all so Make sure you guys go check it out. If you guys see stuff that is not in the store that you would like to see in the store, I will see if I can make that a reality. Let us know, and we'll see what we can do. We're going to be trying to consistently update the store. Um, I mean, probably not on a weekly or even monthly basis, but like um, try to keep it fresh, keep new things coming in. Um, if, there's, if there's things that you guys really like and you want to see it stick around, let me know. Um, you know, we're pretty pretty open to suggestions on the merch stuff so especially put it in the discord if you guys are in the discord make sure you drop suggestions like that in the discord just in the general chat is fine and, and if you're not uh, in the discord get in the discord yeah and if you're not on the discord feel free to join but uh 
but yeah no i'm very excited about it so hopefully there's um something for everybody in there again make sure you guys go check it out see if you like anything and um you know it really helps the channel out so and you get to wear cool tales from highland stuff so it's a win-win but with that i can't think of anything else just remember sunday we're gonna be coming back with the lands of before but before the lands of before we have tonight and tonight we have the continuation of crackleback bound so unless anyone else crackle has barrel anything, mountain crackle barrel mountain crackle barrel i can't talk <laughs> That's what I always say. Uh, I'm, I'm not allowed. Every time you say crackle bag, I'm like Cracker Barrel. <laughs> they have a mean buffalo mac and cheese, man. They got mean white people there, is what they got. That's <laughs> 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 also fair. <laughs> All right. Anything else? I don't think so. In that case. Previously on Crackleback Bound, as the wagons were being loaded and supplies double checked, our party was called to do one last equipment upgrade before heading out on the trail. A few various upgrades were purchased, and once they had finished, they were a small they were asked to help with a small task in the mines and a way to test out their new equipment. A few umber hulks had been rounded up into a small section of the mines, and our party was sent to clear them out. Without too much difficulty, our party cleared the hulks and began to make their way back out of the mines. As you guys were exiting, you could begin to hear the sounds of festivities already beginning to uh, start up for the night as the sun was just cresting down behind the rocks. As you make your way out the exit, though, um... A bit of a, a shorter, stockier dwarf comes uh, just kind of striding up next to you guys as you guys are making your way away, uh, away from the mines. And you guys, excuse me, you guys recognize the outfit he's wearing as just being a part of like the the normal like law enforcement here within uh, Boulder Helm Keep. Um as he pulls up next to you he just uh kind of puts a hand up waving for you to stop uh, are, are y'all the ones that were uh that were taking care of the hulks yeah that'd be us oh okay uh i i figured i thought i seen you with the group preparing for travel uh I was just uh, just making sure the job was done and, and everybody was okay. No one, no casualties or anything. No casualties that matter. Uh, I can't tell if that means one of you died or not. <laughs> I suppose it doesn't matter then, does it? Uh, I'm gonna report that you're all still alive. Um. Uh, yeah, anyway, I was just making sure that uh, the job was done and uh, uh, the festivities are just getting underway, so make sure you don't miss out on the food and drink. And uh, with that, he just turns and starts making his way into uh, into the mines. Um, as he walks away, you do notice he has kind of a bit of an awkward walk. Um, like, almost comical. Like, he's not used to his legs. Just kind of a weird hobble to him. But he meanders over to the mine entrance and disappears into the doorway. Well, okay, what a strange man that was. Continuing towards the loud music and smells of fresh food, a grand gathering lies before you. Realize I should load. I don't have roll twenty up. There we go. Cal, you see your cousin Axel and some of his brothers competing in some contests of strength. Norvala, you can see Basil and Elbris enjoying a mountain of food at their table, along with your parents and a couple of your siblings. Tyne, 
You notice Pillin currently being the center of attention on the dance floor as they are absolutely cutting up a rock. What's everyone doing? I'm immediately going to run to my friend. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go get some drinks, probably. I'm going to go find... Uh, Town's going to stride over and meet up with his cousin. Okay. And you said you were going to find some food time? Yes. Okay. So, as everyone kind of s- scatters as soon as they hit the uh, the festival, everyone heading off in their own separate directions. Um, Segric, as mm-hmm. the rest of the group heads off to friends and families to say their goodbyes, enjoy food, even in this large crowd of people, you find yourself once again alone. Not that it bothers you too much. It's a feeling that you've mm-hmm. become accustomed to at this point. Your thoughts, instead of drifting to being alone or anything of the sort, begin to drift off towards the journey ahead. But soon after, you find them interrupted by a gruff, familiar voice. You just keep finding new ways to get an early release from this world, huh? As you... I suppose... Go ahead, go ahead. No, I was saying, I suppose that's one way you could say it. As you kind of shift out of your thoughts, uh focus on the the small almost feeble looking dwarf walking towards you uh, you recognize him as Polly Stonehunter mm-hmm. though the two of you have never really been friends he's always been there to give his input on your decisions it seems two decades ago he was a pretty decent lawman five decades ago he was a great lawman and a hundred years ago he was the best So what made you make up your mind to do it this time? Well, I figured I had nothing better to do here. I thought I'd uh, head out towards a new frontier. Isn't it technically an old frontier? Our ancestors were there. You know, you got me there, Stone Hunter. I didn't think you were smart enough to put that two and two together. Well, I may be losing my edge in my old age, but, uh, I still got it. You could have fooled me. Well, that's because you're easy to fool. Oh, that cuts deep. I'm sure my words don't mean much to you. Uh, What are you doing here? What do you want? Aim to see everybody off and... Then I heard that you were amongst those that were being sent off. Figured I'd come give my regards. You know, I always knew you'd go out some dumb way, but this is never the way I thought it would be. (laughs) Uh, It's better than the way you'll eventually go out, I'm sure. Yeah, shitting and pissing, probably. (laughs) Well... Well, thank you for your consideration. Those both for you, or just what do you mean? Drinks I wasn't hands. paying attention. He, he just gestures. You know what? Oh, <laughs> here you can have one. Oh, perfect. Now I'm gonna go find someone worth sharing it with. And he turns and makes his Thank way back you. off into the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Norvala. Oh, go ahead. Did you have something more? No, no, no. Sorry, sorry. Okay. No, I was saying. <laughs> Norvala. As you sit there with your friends and family, uh, everyone is kind of laughing and drinking, eating food, and uh, not not necessarily like a, an awkward silence, but there's like a lull in, in the laughter. And uh, to break the silence, your mother in her ever so gentle way that she has of communicating it pipes up to break the silence Novala 
I still don't see why you, you think this is necessary. It's because it is, Mother. I, I, I want to do something with the life that you gave me. But your sisters never went on a deadly excursion, and look how they turned out. Yes, they turned out wonderful. Uh, wouldn't it, uh, you know, perhaps if you tried to be more like them, and uh, your father, like, places his hand on her shoulder and gives you kind of a, a knowing smile as he cuts your mother off. What we mean, honey, is we just don't want to see our little girl get hurt, or, or worse. Wouldn't it be better if you just got into some entertainment business? Or maybe just take over the tavern when we get too old? I already know how I feel about the entertainment business. I'm no good. And I want to do something more than just run the tavern. Go somewhere, see things. I don't know. We're just worried, honey. That That's it. I, your mother and I, we've talked about it, and if this is what you truly want to do, then we're okay with that. Just want you to make sure you fully thought this through. I really don't want you to be at work supper. No, I, I have. And besides, I'm not going alone anyway. You do have a capable crew with you. I hear one of the the orc bashers, and I guess a, a family member of theirs is tagging along. So I'm sure sure you'll be fine. Just uh, mm -hmm. don't uh, don't try to play any music for anyone, uh, or or do. I some people may. Enjoy it. Um, just make friends. I, you know I'm no good. I, I've never been able to talk to you. I, just be safe. She kind of pats your hand, and before there's really any time for like a reply or anything, this being very awkward for um, your mother, uh, regardless of how it affects you, your mother just like turns and goes back to conversing, laughing, and uh, eating food, trying to ignore the subject that just happened. Never listen. Basil just kind of gives you like a, a, a gentle, like, hat of encouragement on the back and slides the uh, rolls over closer to you. Hey, we got this, alright? Don't worry about them. Thanks. Cal, would you go ahead and give me an athletics check? Yeah. <sighs> That is a 12. <clears throat> you watch carefully, waiting for the next move that Jarek makes. And as he ducks low to try to go for one of your legs, you sprawl out on top of him, spinning around behind, quickly flipping him over onto his back. And he just lets out this hearty laugh as you pen him to the ground. Oh, the boys are sure gonna miss you two sorry bastards. Won't be the same in the pit or bashing orcs without you. Well, I'd hope they'd miss me. I'm the only one that could beat them. That's the only part we're not gonna miss. Part of me is, <laughs> part of me is a bit jealous. But the other part of me can't wait to steal all your glory when you're gone. <laughs> uh, 
Well, you know, has been training me for this day, so when the chance comes, you gotta take it. I get it. I get it. But all the nine hells, I'm gonna miss you, boys. What about what about one more drinking contest, huh? For old times' sake, I don't want to remember us being all sappy and shit. I want to remember us slobbering drunk. All right. For old time's sake. Go ahead and make me a constitution saving throw. That is a 14. 14. As um, you guys, like, clank your, your tankards together, uh, Jarek starts into his drink and... Um, Axel, like, seeing what you guys are doing, like, sprints over with his, like, sloshing some out of the side and starts chugging his as well. Um, but you down yours first, slamming it on the table, the last little bit of foam kind of flying up in the air as uh, you all fall into uh, another roar uh, of laughter and regaling tales of your, uh, your younger years and accomplishments thus far. time you kind of find a nice spot after you grab your food you have a view of all the activities the dancing the drinking singing in the contests as you look on memories begin to fill your head you see yourself as a child playing rock ball with your friends behind the clinic then, when you were a bit older, climbing large boulders and exploring the mines with your friends. You remember when you broke your leg, bringing your rock ball career to an early end. You remember learning medicine from your mother and how you used, and how you used your runic magic to heal. Then, going off on your own to hone your skills. Then you remember when you returned home to the clinic. How your mother had fallen ill in her old age. You remember the funeral and taking over the clinic. You remember his friends, family, all ended up in the clinic in their old age. You remember each of the funerals that followed. You've seen much in your four and a quarter centuries, but there's one thing you still have yet to see. But soon, soon, you'll be able to see it. And a long life. Is there anything further anyone would like to do at this night of festivities and celebration before the leaving of the caravan the following? Um, I would like to go to wherever we're sleeping, please. Okay, yeah. You guys are being put up in uh, rooms at an end here within the Boulder Boulder Helm Keep for this last night before your departure. Okay. I just like to leave as soon as possible from the party as I can. Gotcha. Anything in particular you'd like to do in your room or just avoiding people? Just avoiding people. I'm going to try to sleep. Okay. Uh, I want to see if there's anyone maybe I can just kind of play cards with. Okay. This, this is like a few hands just to pass the evening. Sure. Sure. Yeah, you find a, a, a table they're already set up. Looks like they're just starting to deal in a new game. Cool. Still got a seat yeah, open no, if you're no. interested. Oh, I would be delighted. Very well. <clears throat> any amount of, or I guess this baby would be out of out of character. Like any like money they're putting in, 
Yeah. Or is yeah, it just, little, just like few? A little bit of a little okay. bit of betting going on. Nothing crazy. Okay. You, so yeah, two yeah. Silver pieces is the highest you've seen bet. Okay. Yeah. So I'll just sit down. I'll have a few a few silver mm -hmm. with me. Yeah. I'll just sit down. I'll play a few rounds of cards with them. All right. Um. Go ahead and roll me. Uh, go ahead and roll me five d six. Ooh, five d six. All right. Oh. Uh, seven. Fourteen. No, oh, wait. Shoot, I should have. Sorry. Uh, just the individual numbers. Oh shoot. Okay. Um, it was one six one six two. <laughs> So you've got uh, a pair of sixes and a pair of twos. Okay. Alright, go ahead and... Um, Keep keep what you want to keep and re-roll what you want to re-roll. There's there, there's pairs, there's three of a kind, four of a kind, five of a kind, mm. and then there's straights. It's pretty much what you've, um, you've got to work with. Okay. Thank you, Yahtzee. Well, we're not going to figure out how to do a flush? Come on, okay. Um, I'm going to re-roll my two. Yeah, how many green or, dice do you have? <laughs> how many green dice did I have? <laughs> uh, all right. I'm gonna keep my sixes. I'm gonna keep my ones. I'm gonna try and re-roll my two. I guess full house would be an option too. Yeah. All right, I got a four. Yeah, pretty good call. Thank Yahtzee. <laughs> yep. Okay. That's kind of what I was going for. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sit down playing a game of Yahtzee with these guys. <laughs> That's where my brain went. I was like, okay. Okay. I mean, yeah, like, it works out. Yep, so I got, uh, I re-rolled my two and I got a four. Alright, and one more time. Whatever you want to keep, keep it. Whatever you want to roll, roll. Yep, I'm going to try one more time for that full house. Damn. Okay, got a three. Alright, so one, one. Six six three of mine. One one six six three. So a pair of ones and a pair of sixes. Pair of two. Yep. So two pair. pair sixes. I think you're gonna take it. They went for the uh, large straight and ended up with just a pair of twos. So. <laughs> Hell yeah. So uh, yeah, your winnings from that round are four silver. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> Want to play another round or just kind of? Nah, like, nah, nah. We can. We can have. We can say he. He. And, yeah. We can say he played for a little bit longer. We don't have to play out anymore. So <laughs> that is what. Sit down. Nah, nah, nah. We can. We can move on. We can. Move on. We'll say play, he kept playing play into play the Yahtzee night though. Yeah. Just hold on, guys. I'm hijacking this stream. I'm playing <laughs> play Yahtzee, Yahtzee right now. <laughs> hold on. It's Yahtzee for money and no cards. You know. And no cards. <laughs> My. <laughs> my proficiency oh. in playing cards is actually proficiency in Yahtzee. Yep, um, yep. 100% <laughs> what it is. Oh, I should have given you another reroll for your proficiency. Next time. Oh, it's next fine. It's whatever. Next time. Up. Next time you play <laughs> Next Yahtzee, time cards you, come you, up. You know, remind <laughs> me of proficiency. <laughs> I'm going to put in parentheses playing cards <laughs> slash Yahtzee. <laughs> All right. You continue playing cards into the night. You know what? Go ahead and give me a, a, a playing card. Yeah, we'll just say we'll give just me, say give into me the a night. Playing card yeah. Like uh, I don't know what that would be. Charisma? Are you cheating? I would say um. If you cheat, I guess dexterity. Um, least, I could see wisdom or intelligence too, like knowing when to. I was thinking maybe like we could do like run. deception for you like away, bluffing. I was thinking yeah, like deception to like bluff and stuff like that. Uh yeah, go ahead and make a deception check. Sweet. And if you're not proficient in deception, use your proficiency from your cards. Got a 24. 24. Uh, yeah, the night goes well. You end up awesome. in total making uh, eight more silver pieces. Hell yeah. 
you know, rolling you lose, in there. lose a couple, but you you come out. Yeah, lose a couple here and there. But... Silver. That's that's yeah. That's one point two gold pieces. That's, that's, yeah, that's, that's a lot of money. <laughs> All right. Anyone okay. else? Okay, no, I'm done. Um, I'll wait for Polan to kind of get done with his dancing and stuff, and then kind of gesture him over to me. Yeah, by the time, uh, Polan's not much of a drinker, but he has had a couple of glasses, which is, uh, more than enough for them to, uh, begin to feel it, as, um, their performance through dancing and, uh, their just natural, charismatic ways about them. You know, people bringing them drinks and them not refusing and such, but uh, still coherent enough makes their way over to you. Oh, are you enjoying the evening so far? I know. It's another party. I've seen many. Uh, yes, yes. So you say every time we go to one? Yes, you seem to be having an, an enjoyable time. Well... Unlike some potentially present company, I still have all of my legs about me. Still have my legs about me? I'm going on this journey, aren't I? Yes, which you will be spending most of on the wagon, as we agreed on. See, I mean feel the need to stretch them out a bit. I don't think you could even stay mounted on a boar if we had some to bring with us. <sighs> I think uh, a okay. bench seat on a wagon sounds like your foreseeable future. We'll see. I suppose Are you going will. to call it quits soon? Oh, me? Well, if you need help back to your room, I... I... I can call it now. I but, don't uh, need help back to my room. I'm asking if you're calling it quit soon. Well, in that case, I think I'll dance for a little while longer. Sounds just fine. Just remember that we do have much traveling to do tomorrow. We have much traveling to do for the foreseeable future. May as well enjoy the party while I can. But please, if you need help, come and get me. Or send someone to get me. I'll be fine. I think I'll head back now, actually. Thank you for... Thank you for checking, though. You enjoy. Have fun. Use those young legs of yours. Are you sure you don't need any help? I'm fine. All right. Go dance. Very well. Then he skips back out onto the dance floor. A small cheer kind of residing as he skips back out. And on that note, I will head bed. All right. Callum, I believe you are the only one left. Is there anything you would like to do before turning in for the evening? Or how would you like to spend the rest of your evening? Do you just... uh, try not to pass out and go to bed so I don't fall asleep on the bench. Or a table, or whatever I'm sitting at. Go, go ahead go ahead and make me uh, another constitution saving throw. That is a dirty 20. Um, you hold your liquor very well, and as, um, Jarek is now slumped over the table, like, snoring, slobbering drunk, passed out on the table you guys were at, um, Axel, needing a little bit of assistance with his balance, you kind of throw Axel's arm over your shoulder, and, uh, you being pretty much fine, uh, guide your guys' way back to your rooms at the end where uh, you can get some rest before taking off tomorrow morning. Alrighty then. Alright. 
With that, if any of you need it, you can go ahead and mark off that you got a long rest. Everything that comes with that. I believe a few of you took some damage the previous day, so... Yup. Just a little. Okay. I think that's everything. Get all of our, our mana points back. Hey, there you go. That is true. Those of you who are casters. All right. Is there anything specific anyone would like to do in the morning? Or is everyone just heading back out to uh, where the wagons are? I think I'm just going to head back to the wagon. Okay. Yeah, I'm ready to go. I'll just head back to the wagons. Get ready. Cal wants to check on the musks again. On the musks again? Okay, perfect. So back at the wagons. Norvala, just heading to the wagons? Yeah. All right. The next morning, everyone returns to the wagons, and though much less thorough than the day before, one more check of the supplies is made. Callum, if you would like to make another animal handling check. That's an out one. Oh, no. <laughs> As, um... And I knocked my water over to... As you start to uh, approach one of the musts, um, a a bit of food that was kind of left over from the festivities the night before that you didn't see. You kind of step in and slip a little bit, which startles the must, which you immediately like just like back away from you and become uh, defensive. <clears throat> and uh, about that time, um, you just hear from behind you. Oh, my fucking head. What did you put in my drinks last night? Which scares the musts even more as they are now, like, stomping the ground and uh, starting to kind of uh, do that, like, nervous uh, cattle, like, back up as uh, one of the the drivers, like, makes his way over and starts, like, calming uh, the musts back down, begins reprimanding um, Axel for yelling at the musts. And um, as you kind of just like take a step back, avoiding the uh, the brunt of the accusation. Yeah, jeez, Axel. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I just woke up with one of the worst headaches of my life. I don't know the fuck you put in the drinks last night, but I haven't had an headache like this in fucking ten years. That wouldn't be on the account of how many drinks you had, not what was in the drinks. Oh, the amount never bothered me before. It's always just the amount that's in it. Oh, damn. (laughs) Maybe you're getting old. Can't handle your liquor as well. And now you washed your mouth there. I ain't getting old yet. (laughs) His voice, like, drops an octave as he says it, revealing his age. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but uh, as the two of you kind of make your way away from the must now um, letting them calm back down um, and as everyone else kind of helps makes, make the uh, the final preparations before the departure um, Segric you are approached by Burnham, yes. the, the dwarf who was like in charge of seeing you guys mm-hmm. out of uh, the city. And uh, he like has a, a rolled up piece of paper and like uh, a small medallion on a chain. And he like just shoves both of them into your chest. I was told you're pretty good with maps and you've got a solid head on your shoulders. Uh, This is the map. Uh, It it was drawn by a traveler who visited a few years back. Uh, The naturally Axel Orkbasher, son of Bloodhammer Orkbasher, should be leader of this expedition. But 
you know, it is his birthright, but uh, apparently, in his words, he's no good at following orders, but he's worse at giving them out, and he's refused the leadership, and so then it was decided that instead of having a single leader, a group was going to be put in charge of the expedition, but then, well, in complete transparency, we don't know much about anyone that's going on this, and no one thinks you're coming back anyway. So I was put in charge. And frankly, I don't like that. So now I'm putting you in charge. You can put a group together before you leave. You can study people along the way and decide, or you can keep the power to yourself. I couldn't care less. But an old friend of mine, apparently one of yours, said that you were a good choice. So I'll make sure everyone knows what's going on. After that, you're on your own. And he slaps you on the back and turns and starts heading towards the biggest, like, gathering of people by the wagons all right segric uh, the guy with the hat there he's in charge good luck and may thor strike every fucking orc from your path and like turns and walks off he is done with this expedition he is wiping his hands clean of it and he has done his part and he's going home he's just, he's just like, i'm two weeks till retirement and i know how this trope goes i'm staying home <laughs> <laughs> looking like the map and stuff and I'm like well alright okay I suppose I wasn't expecting this here, here we go as you kind of like right. looking at this stuff that was just literally shoved into your chest a brief <laughs> explanation of what was going on was handed down to you and the person that did it like walked off as you kind of watch him walk off your eyes kind of trail away as he walks into this crowd and uh off to the side with kind of a, a a knowing grin on his face you see uh Polly give you a nod and turn and start making his way back into the town well that son of a bitch okay then <laughs> putting me on the spot like this <laughs> my charisma is not high <laughs> so uh, the map <laughs> yes. that you have. Give me a second. I'll pull that up on the uh, the rule twenty, so that you know what the map is that you have. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> might be it's all wingdings and comic sans to me. I can't read this. <laughs> <laughs> going in a going in a general that way direction, I suppose. I I do suppose. I do declare. I do declare. <laughs> There you are. You guys should be able to see it on the uh, on the roll twenty now. Okay. And those of well. you viewing, if you give me just a second, I'll have it pulled up on stream too. Sorry. Ooh. But go ahead, continue. Oh, I was kind of like talking to myself, just looking over oh, the gotcha, map, just gotcha. being like, "Well, so yep." I guess, where where are we at in regards to this map? Uh, you guys are right here. Oh, okay, that is us. Okay. The mountains in the bottom left-hand corner is where you're trying to be. Okay. Well, shoot, this shouldn't be that long of a trick. According to this map, we're only like a couple hours away. My cartography skills are not the best. Um, and if you see on the mountains, there is a, a little, uh, there's two hammers crossed. Yep, I see that. And that is marking what should be Crackleback Keep. Okay. But uh, the rest of this is literally just like a map of like, you knew that to the south, you had the Veriled Grasslands. So mm -hmm. um, 
very, very hot in the summertime, but spring where it is now, this early spring, um, should be pretty nice. Um, but the buildings on here mean nothing to you. The giant crater on here means nothing to you. You can tell the difference okay. in the terrain between like grassland, swamp, mountains. All right, cool. Got that much figured out. But like, yep. as far as the landmarks that are marked out on here, um, it's, it's really meaningless other than like, okay, so I guess that's on the way there. So now I am a well-educated man. Could I perhaps roll like a history and see if I know sure, something about, okay. <laughs> Oh, ooh, okay, that's really good. Um, I think I'm proficient in history. That is a 26. So you're fairly certain this um, this little thing down here um, would be Bloodflow Castle. It's the Grassland Orcs like stronghold, like giant orc city. Um, uh, it's basically like a bunch of camps that got thrown together into a city and pretty much nobody makes it past that um you don't you don't okay one does not simply march into blood flow castle march into blood flow castle yeah exactly <laughs> uh it's not not an easy thing to get away with um it's you know um i mean it's got a lot of different names amongst the dwarves you know um uh dwarves uh, a lot of them call it um like the equivalent of the like dwarven term for toilet um, because it's where the, okay. it's where the piss runs the to. Um, mm. yep. Uh, so every time they get the turned away John. here, the, the piss runs back home. Um, pretty much just derogative names like that. Um, as the dwarves okay. and the orcs do not get along at all, mainly because they've always been killing each other ever since the dwarves got here. The crater yeah. does not ring a bell to you at all. Okay. You, you no don't crater. know what that could be. You've never heard of anything. You haven't seen anything like that before. I mean, you've seen craters before, but like not one that yeah, looks yeah. like it's but, the size of a city. At least yeah, this map. is a very big crater. Uh -huh. um, and as far as the other city goes, you know that you've heard of a city within the grassland, but to your knowledge, no one knew what it was called or if it was real let alone had a map with that city on it. Mm. Well, okay. I know one spot for sure we don't want to go. I know there's a big crater, and I know there's another city, but I don't know what's there. Um, All right, at, sounds good. At this point in time, Tyne, you kind of stride up next to um, uh, mm. Segric as everyone that's a part of this caravan van has, like, Turned and been staring at you like the entire time you've been studying the mm -hmm. map, waiting for you to like say anything. And uh, <laughs> time just like kind of makes her way up to you and like tugs on your coat a little bit, like nudging you to show you that, uh, hey, mm -hmm. uh, maybe say something. <laughs> oh, uh, so, hmm, well then. All right, which, let's go. Which, which, which way first, darling? Uh, oh, uh, Zara, yeah, uh, uh, first, let's just, uh, I guess, uh, how, f like, how far, like, what's, like, if the you, scale, like, the, from... If you pull up the measure tool... Oh, would have the, I the measure tool, it. yeah. I have it on there. You make Sweet. sure you use the, uh, the one that's, like, no snapping. That one's gonna give you the most accurate no, measurement. No snapping, okay. Oh, oh, oh. It's just a... It was a long way. It's okay. Um, well, all right then. So, uh, oh, this is okay. Uh, our first objective, uh, let's head about a uh, couple 200 miles south. I will see what I can learn from there about this map, uh, about if we're going to head to uh, this old old city over here, or if we head to this crater, odds are we're probably not going to want to go to this uh, orc city. That's probably no good. Everyone, everyone I guess uh, I can leave... <laughs> looking at you right now, like the way that you're describing everything, like oh no, this is the navigator. Um, <laughs> and uh, well. Tynus, he's like pointing to the different places when he says, <laughs> this old city here, 
you actually you recognize the city <laughs> and uh, the placement of the city as being the sunlit citadel. It's an elven mm. city, closed off to most people, um, not really willing to help anyone if you're not an elf. Um, but they've always had, like, at least an understanding with the dwarves. They didn't help the dwarves when they made their way over here, but they also didn't try to kill them like the orcs did. Um, they stay neutral in pretty much every conflict, um, but there's, like, a mutual respect between the dwarves and this citadel as uh, the dwarves have kept the number of orcs down, which has made their lives easier. Okay. Well, with that information... Yeah, relay that information. (laughs) I will say, yeah, with that information, I think, uh... I believe I can speak Elvish. I might be able to do something. I can. (laughs) So I think that'll be our first objective, is to head, head to that sunlit citadel. Um... And uh, on the way, I'm going to try and uh, study up on my my knowledge of the landscape because I was not expecting to have to know about this landscape. I thought I was just going to be some hired muscle. Okay. <laughs> I'm just going to like lean. I'm just going to like lean over to him a little bit. And be like, darling, you might want to work on your confidence. Oh, I'm pretty confident where it matters. This is not what I was expecting to do. <laughs> Let me tell you, you want to play some cards? I'll play cards. I'll show you how confident I am with that. I keep fl- I keep making like a gesture like I'm flipping through a book. It's, it's a map. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, just going to pat him on the arm and be like, come come find me when you need help. You will, I'll take you up on that offer. <laughs> All right, but I'm going to give, I'm going to give the, uh, the instruction yeah that we're gonna head south we're gonna head towards the sunlit citadel uh and hopefully some of our diplomacy will be able to get us some assistance all right let me get a quick measurement just to make sure i'm not about to spew some bullshit okay yeah, yeah, yeah. so to get like completely out of the stone valley out of zon of Lenith, uh, which is dwarven for stone valley um, stone valley <laughs> um <laughs> You've got about, like, a three-day journey ahead of you um, before you're no longer camping on stone, which honestly is, it's a big help for morale at the beginning of this. Um, Most of you going, you know, you have your various reasons, whether it's adventure, whether it's you have nothing better to do and you want to go see some new stuff, or... um, you have to prove yourself. You feel like this is something you need to do. Whatever your reasoning, not everybody is as stuck in their reasoning. And so having this uh, this little bit of like familiar territory these first few days is definitely, definitely helpful. The first few days of travel go on with no issue. The weather stays relatively nice for early spring, and uh, the morale is kept high for the most part. However, about halfway through your first day um, out of Zon of Lenith, out of the Stone Valley, um, mm. the front wagon begins to have a few issues already. The front right wheel is starting to like come loose and it's causing the caravan to have to stop every every so often um you guys have uh your carpenter here who's working on the wagon and it's just every once in a while you have to stop he makes some quick repairs to the wheel but he can't get it uh so far he hasn't been able to get it to where it's not actively slowing you guys down by the end of the fourth day though, um, when you guys stop and set up camp here on the fourth day, um, <clears throat> Yormick, Wheelbender, he makes his way uh, up to you, Cedric. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> oh, Alright, well, I've had a little bit of time now, 
So I've done the best I can with the wheel. But the cogs aren't gripping like they should. With the way it's fixed right now, it's functional. Might slow us down from time to time, but it should hold. However, if we hit a bump the wrong way, it would cause a twist, and the way it's wobbling, if that happens, we could damage more than just the cogs. Could lose the wheel, maybe even damage the axle too. But on the other hand... May you show me? May I take a look? Uh, absolutely. I, have a, I, can, I can finesse a little bit. Sure, if you want to take a look at it, go ahead. If you can All see something right. I'm missing. Can I maybe make like an investigation? Sure. Yeah, let's investigate this. Should, oh, dang. Okay, uh, I think it's still really good. Um, I think it might be a 14. 13. A 13? Yep. Um, with what um, with what you know about you know uh, wagon wheels, how they function, um, it seems to line up with what he's saying. Um, how it is right now, it's functional, and as long as you don't hit anything um, too too rough of terrain or anything, everything should be fine. However, if there's if there's a rut, if there's a rock that isn't seen in time, um, a hole in the ground or something. What he's referring to specifically is the way that the cogs are allowing the wheel to slip off of its resting place. If it lands and forces it off, the wheel's going to twist, and depending on how willing that tire is to, or the, not the tire, sorry, the wheel is to the wheel to, to break. Um, it could take, it could bend the axle with it instead of just breaking the wheel. Breaking the wheel is one thing. Okay. You have an extra. Um, but damaging the axle is a much bigger repair. Okay. Uh, Mr. Wheelbender, I might ask, are you, uh, are you attuned with magic in any nature? Uh, just, uh, just a little bit. I know, like, the mending spell, uh, big small okay. things, but... All right. And you tried that, that won't work on this. No, it's not going. Hmm. Normally, I'd hmm. say it'd fix something like this, but I I'm wondering if it doesn't have to do more with the the crafting of the cogs in the first place. <laughs> hmm. Well, I guess I'll see if I can ask anybody around. Um, see if anybody could help. In the meantime, uh, let's just keep mending this up as best we can. So Prioritize got, the axle. Uh, well, we do we do have the have the stuff to fix it and I could fix it but it's gonna take me about two days if we stop to do it it'll I figure it'll take half a day to unload everything off the wagon and then probably a couple hours to fix it which pretty much takes us to nightfall and then depending on how it looks when I get the wheel off it could be more or less time then we gotta reload the wagon and hitch up the muss. And on top of that, I've only got enough cogs to replace each wheel one time. So, if we blow out the cogs again, we could slowly start getting ourselves deep into the mud with no way out, if, if you catch my meaning. Deep, yeah, deep trouble, especially this early on in the trip. Um, End of the day, it's up to you. Both have the risks, hmm. but both could work out with the right amount of luck. I'm gonna go. So yeah, let's let's end uh, let's end the day here for now. Let's think. I'll let you know if by by the end of the day if we'll work on repairing it, or if we're just gonna we're gonna risk pushing through. All righty, like I said, it, either way is fine by me. I, just letting you know the risks on both. Mm hmm. All right, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna try and go around and gather any bit of intel I can about people who might be able to help maybe have any sort of like fixes or maybe maybe more trying to get like the the feel for what people are are thinking like would they be willing to take the risk are they okay with waiting okay it's more 
um, as you approach one of the uh, campsites that it's a, it's all like one campsite, but you know how you kind of have like little groups within. Yeah, you break into small um, groups. Uh, you recognize uh, three of the people here as you uh, fought some Umber Hulks with them, um, mm-hmm. as well as there appears to be uh, uh, someone who's already got a fire going, has has food on, um, is working on getting food made for everybody for for uh, the evening meal. And um, one uh, other you don't recognize who's currently sitting having a conversation with Norvala. And um, one you recognize um, but haven't really met met yet um, as uh, Axel um, Orc Basher sitting with the uh, dwarf that you know to be uh, Callum. Okay. And uh, Axel was the one who was supposed to be the original leader on this trip. <laughs> That's the one. Dude. Basically, yeah, well, yeah, he was. It was his birthright to lead this because he is the son of the leader okay. of uh, the Orc Basher Keep. But he was like, no. All right. Um. Yeah, I'm going to go up to them and I'm going to ask, like, Good evening, gentlemen. Well, is it is the evening? What time of day is it? Yeah, it'd be evening at this point. You guys have stopped. Okay, okay. I assumed it was evening. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Just pull. Just go. It's like nine a.m. What do you mean, good evening? No, yeah. <laughs> 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 it was the thing where you were like, you were describing like, yeah, like the campsites and the fires and stuff. So I just assumed it was evening, but I was like, what if it was? What if it was like noon? <laughs> and I was like, we're just resting for a little bit. Um, okay. And it's going up. To, good evening, gentlemen. Uh. My name is Cedric, and uh, I am, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I didn't want to be in charge, but they made me in charge. And I, I know you are such a great and wise and leader, Mr. Orc Basher. Um, I wanted your opinion on something. He just starts belly laughing. Who the fuck lied to this chap? <laughs> Just because my name's Orc Basher don't mean I know what I'm doing. I know how to swing a club, I know how to swing an axe. But other than that, well, I fall short on pretty much every other account. Well, to be fair, sometimes that's all you need to do. Um, but I know you were a well-respected man. Uh, and I wanted your I wanted your opinion. So currently, one of our wagons, it's a... Uh, like, I try my best to explain the phoenix out yeah. one of the like, Yeah, sure. In in character, I explained it. I don't want to accidentally the one with the say it wrong. And but, yeah, I want. Uh, we're thinking we could spend a couple days to fix it, uh, or we can risk and push through, trying to repair it along the way. But then, if something bad happened, it could hold us back even longer. I would like you know if you think it would be wise to keep pushing forward and run that risk, or if you're okay staying. To be honest, I'm perfectly fine staying where we are for a couple of days, but I will say it could be a bit dangerous. We are starting to get into the crest of orc territory. Well, that's okay. I think we can hold off some orcs here and there. Okay, I would rather us... It's a bit dangerous, but I'd rather make it one that we were prepared for than one that we have to do. Exactly. And they said you weren't a smart man. Who said that? It's kind of pointing a general that direction. Uh, some of them over there. Anyway. Alan kind of elbows him in the shoulder and is like, everyone you ever met? I like the spunk on this one. All right. Axel's so yes, yeah, so I'm going to go back. To I'm going to let him... Um, oh. Mumbling under his breath. Just... <laughs> Whatever. Uh, so I'm going to go... I'm going to go back and talk to Wheelbender and let him know, yeah, that we're going to spend couple days we're gonna repair the wheel and then we're gonna keep pushing forward we're not gonna risk breaking breaking down along the road and putting us in a bad predicament okay. here we can set up kind of fortitudes and play defensive okay well as you guys set up for a bit of a longer um 
a bit of a longer camp here instead of uh, just for the night. Um, Basil, the one who is preparing food for everyone, like starts just clanging his uh, his metal uh, ladle on the back of a pan, calling everybody to get food. And uh, as you all sit down to eat your meal and uh, prepare to kind of wait out this uh, this bit of construction that needs to happen, we're going to go ahead and take a little bit of a break. So we'll be back here in like five to ten minutes and uh, continue with the story. So don't go anywhere unless you want to go to the restroom, get some drinks and stuff, but don't touch that dial or something that makes me sound old. <laughs> go touch that dial. <laughs> <All right. laughs> we'll be back in a little bit. Hey guys, hopefully you're enjoying the episode so far. I know we had a lot of fun making it. If you guys want to catch a little bit more of me, you want to check out my other content, you can find me at twitch.tv slash bear with us. And if you guys want to get in on this live, if you want to watch this, the story unfold live, you can do that every Monday night, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on the Tales from Hylam Twitch channel. So hopefully we'll see you there. Guys, it's finally here. We've got the Tales from Hylam merch store. Go to talesfromhylam.com. Guys, we got beanies. We got snapbacks. We got notebooks. We got joggers, water bottles. Go check it out. We got sheets of stickers. So go get yourselves a little bit of Tales from Hylam merch. Show, you know, represent a little bit. And uh, it really helps us out. So yeah, talesfromhylam.com is finally here. Go give it a peek. And uh, thank you for all your guys' support. You guys are amazing. Enjoy the rest of the show. Hey, guys, we just came back from break. There wasn't any technical difficulties or anything at all. <laughs> What's up, people that are watching this on YouTube and didn't catch us in the act? <laughs> no, <laughs> YouTube will just edit this out. <laughs> yep. <laughs> if you guys want to see what happened, you can go watch the VOD, but I don't know why you would want to watch that. <laughs> it's just extra <laughs> steps. Nothing happened. It's not very entertaining. So, all right, here we go. Apologies for how long that took. <laughs> okay. Let me... So you guys have chosen to take the, uh, the two days to your journey and yes. um, get the, the wagon fixed. Yes. Uh, yep. So say, I'll go around. Uh, say, I'm just gonna go around yeah, and I'll ask uh, Callum, uh, as well as yeah, Mister Mister Orc Basher. You know, they're in charge of setting up like a defensive sort of perimeter around the camp, in case any in case any orcs come by. Okay, we'll be ready to fight back. All right. So right now, you guys are like right in this area here can you guys see my okay yep. okay just making sure so yeah. still quite a long ways to go but um the next two days go pretty smoothly no orc attacks in the middle of the night nor during the middle of the day and um eventually after unloading the entirety of the wagon then fixing it reloading everything up um Yormick comes up to you and says that all is well and you should be good to leave the next morning all right excellent work with that the next morning you guys begin back into your journey awesome Perfect. No, see, nothing went wrong in universe either. We didn't have any technical difficulties anywhere. Um. So, because, as you guys have noticed with the map, of how far the distance is that you guys have to cover and how long it's going to take, we're not going to be sitting here doing every single day of travel and stuff. There's going to be a okay. lot of... Uh, little like day skips here and there and stuff like that. So I'm going to call for um, a perception check from everyone just for keeping your eyes out. And this is just like for 
the next amount of time that goes by before like an important thing happens right so you're not gonna have okay. to make a new one every single day so you're not gonna have to make 87 perception checks on this journey <laughs> or more that could be fun though like be interesting uh perception I got 23. 23. I got a dirty 20. Okay. I got a 13. And what'd you get, Tyne? 12. 12, gotcha. All right. I'm getting soft in my old age. No worries. You need those reading glasses. <laughs> <laughs> um, Norvala. As... You guys are continuing on. This would be now, um, wait one second, sorry. Should have had this. You guys were here. So another, um, another four days have gone by at this point. And though the wheel seems to be holding up, there's been, um, no no orcs attack but there have been a few sightings um here and there just off in the distance and on this day uh norvala earlier on in the morning um you could have swore that um you saw someone something um in kind of the taller brush next to where you guys are traveling uh, heading parallel just like it seemed like they were watching, but you couldn't like get a good enough glimpse and just kind of being shy as you are at first, not really mentioning it to anyone other than, um, uh, Basil. <clears throat> uh, eventually, um, word does get passed to you, Segrig, from, uh, Basil that, Thought there might be something, uh, something or someone, uh, following. Okay, we will keep an eye out for that then. As far as movement along either side of you, you don't really notice anything else. However, towards evening, as dusk is approaching, as, um, the light is beginning to make it harder and harder to see um up ahead norvala you first notice that something with the path up ahead seems off um there's no road that you guys are traveling on right now because there's no road between where you are and where you're going and so you're just trying to stick to like the flattest surface possible and where you've come up to is a little bit more slanted there's a little bit of a, a of a hill here um but it plateaus a little bit towards the center of the hill which is the path the path that you guys are taking right now but up ahead it almost looks like there is a path norvala like stuff has been cleared and as you guys start passing some of it you notice it's fresh enough that there's still plants there's still uh fresh freshly like moved dirt sitting off to the side and as you're kind of like taking this in um segric who's walking beside um the same wagon as you but was further back kind of makes his way up um as you notice that Norvala seems to have noticed the same thing that you've started to see as well, Cedric. Okay. Say, uh, little lady, uh, do you happen to see anything suspicious out yonder there? Um, yeah, it, it, it doesn't, it doesn't quite doesn't quite look right up ahead. Hmm. 
Well, hmm. Okay. I'm gonna look around. Does it seem has anyone else kind of like caught wind of anything suspicious, or is it just kind of the two of us? Uh, right now, it kind of just seems like it's the two of you. Um, okay. Callum and Axel, Axel are kind of like, um, like, it looks like one of them like accidentally bumped into the other one, and now they're just like shoulder checking each other like back and forth, um, not really paying attention like to like do. what's uh, laying on the ground in front of them. Um, Tyne seems to be pretty caught up in uh, their their new uh, knitting project, and. Um, uh, some of the others uh, more concerned about looking out rather than what's like right here mm -hmm. in front. Okay. Hmm. So, who would? So I guess yeah. If I if I'm like in charge, who would else would be like? I don't know. Like I guess I did. I I probably should have picked someone to be like second in command. Uh, um, <laughs> that's or some you. other kind of like. <laughs> I was about to say, I was like, fuck. Uh, I guess, what is, like, what is, like, Basil's, like, position, like, his job? He just, he cooks. Oh, he's just cook. Okay. Yep. <laughs> I wasn't sure if he was something else. Um, I was like, so you keep bringing up Basil. Like, is he important? Like, <laughs> he just got a good eye on him? Okay. Um, hmm. uh, Basil, he, you're my second. He's the cook, man. and over the last, like, I mean, you've been traveling for uh, almost 10 days together like, now. 10 days, um, yeah. Yeah, something that you definitely would have noticed is um, Norvala pretty much talks to two people. She talks to okay. the dwarf that you know as Basil, and she talks okay. um, to uh, another dwarf that you know as Elbris. Um, Elbris' profession is blacksmithing. She's um, She helped with the repairs on the wagon wheel. She's, you know here so that you know when you guys get there you guys have a blacksmith or if repairs along the way like let's say something did happen to the axle well she'll do what she okay. can <laughs> okay hmm. all right then so but yeah those are like the only two that um novala has really been talking to okay so ooh, i think what i'm gonna do is it's like so have we took on we took on those umber hulks i turned into norvala <laughs> like we took down those umber hulks pretty easily so i'm gonna ask for your assistance on this um if you would so kindly go grab that uh that kind elderly woman over there ask her to come this way and i'm gonna go speak with that other fine young chap who helped us couple days back um i think we're gonna we're gonna do a little scouting oh, okay so yeah so say how send norvala yeah you go grab you go grab tyne i'm gonna go grab callum and then i'm also while i'm over there talking to callum i'm gonna be like mr orc basher uh we're going to step out, just do a little scouting for a little bit. If you would so kindly, protect the caravan while we're away. I Well, there's something I can do. All righty. That's what I like to hear. Gives Callum, like, one last shoulder check as he starts to make his way away. All right. And also, like, roughly, roughly, what is, like, the age of, like, ev like in we don't have to worry about in dwarven years, but, like, in human years, like, what is everyone's... Kind well, like I mean, dwarves, age. dwarves, and uh, humans mature at the same rate. Um, it's just yeah. dwarves live longer. So, um, mm -hmm. like, <laughs> as far as that goes, um, age maturity wise, um, Axel would be like in his seventies. Um, behavioral maturity okay. wise, he's like. It, 2120 okay. somewhere in there. Um uh, Basil is a little bit older. Um maybe like just cresting that 100 year mark. Um and acts his age. He's very uh mature, very uh you know, he 
not i wouldn't call him a conversationalist but he'll have a conversation with somebody um then um uh elbris is a little bit younger than uh basil maybe around the same age as axel okay um also acts uh a little bit not not so much immaturity just maybe like a little less professional okay um but yeah, as far to, as one of those things where when you have that's one of the things where, yeah, when like oh they're like they can get up to 250 years old mm -hmm. and so when you say like yeah i'm like 80 it's like is that like 80 and like you're like an old man or is that like <laughs> oh, i'm still like a spry a spry 80 years old say, as far um, as <laughs> as far as everyone else like i won't speak for everyone else but if you kind of want to give mm -hmm. good old cedric a, a bit of a like a age range for yourself yeah just kind of more yeah more like a mental or like yeah maturity level of like age sort of thing because yeah because i imagine cedric's like the dwarven equivalent of like a 36 year old Like, um, like Talum, Talum, Talum and Tyne, like how roughly old are you guys? I'm old. Like, I should be dead old. figure that much. Oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe in character, I'd be like, I feel weird bringing this old woman along, but she fucking knits a mean fireball, so. <laughs> oh. Yeah, nope. But then, so uh, old that, like, oh. you may question whether, like, how she's still alive, kind of thing. Okay. <laughs> um, Pushing 260. Uh, are you talking about Tyne? Yeah, yeah, Tyne. <laughs> like, oh, even higher than that orgy was okay. Even, even higher than. Oh, oh dang. <laughs> I made this character two years ago and I never gave him an age. I was like, they seem to have like the mental, like, yeah, like the uh, go getterness of, yeah, like a young adult, like. Um, so. His mental mentality is kind of that, um. I don't want to say spoiled. But kind of the mentality of a high school jock who got into college on a sports application or on also a sports a scholarship. Bro. Yes. <laughs> with a sword or with okay. an axe and a mall. With an axe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And yeah, Norvala, I assume, is a bit younger as well, just kind of based on based on her demeanor and stuff. So. And plus, I mean, out of character, you know, like, talking to, like, the parents and stuff. <laughs> it felt very much like, kind of like a younger, a younger dwarf, so. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, I got a wide range. I got, I got, yep. I got grandma who's pushing death here, <laughs> and I got, like, this high school, or, like, this college frat boy, Time. and I don't know, like, a high school theater kid. Uh, I, got, I, got, like, I got a good crew. Time's not, like, falling apart or anything, but, like, when you watch her, like, get around, you like a half expect to be digging a grave any point in time along this trip like every day that you wake up you're like is time still with us oh time's, time's still alive, alive. okay still... cool just... all right cool. no <laughs> graves yet okay. <laughs> like that is that is literally yep that is literally the character okay <laughs> All right, yeah. So whatever justification—I mean, I guess yeah—the justification I had is that we took we cleared out those umber hulks, yeah, and they did a pretty good job. So I'm like, all right, these are the ones I know, these are the ones I trust. So I'm gonna try and wrangle them up and be like, hey, uh, Ms. Norvala and I caught wind of something suspicious out, but however far the DM said, I can't remember now. <laughs> uh, a few hundred feet, not not like okay. <laughs> super close, but not like a mile away. I think it was. I couldn't remember if you said like a hundred feet or like a hundred yards. And so I was oh, like, "Oh, okay, okay, yeah." And, and like okay. you guys have passed some of the suspicious activity as well. And it was more like as you guys came up to it, you're like, 
wow, this dirt is like freshly moved. These plants are like freshly cut. This is weird. But you can see okay. like out in front of you is where there's like a more like cleared path, which just seems a bit weird. Because it seems like it almost could be natural, but just something about it just it doesn't look right compared to everything else around. Okay. All right, we're gonna go on a little. I'm just gonna go on a little scout mission. Is all. All right. So if someone wants to give me, um, well, you guys can like tell me what you want to do specifically on this little scouting thing, and I'll tell you what role I need from you. Um, I will. I'll just kind of investigate. Okay. What what specifically though? Like, what are what are you, what are you bringing to this like group of checks? Are you looking for tracks? Are you looking for uh, plants that don't belong? Are you just using your knowledge of the area? What what are what are you doing? Yeah, let's let's just use my knowledge. I have a pretty good history background. Okay. So let's just use like knowledge of the area. See if I see anything that looks familiar. That kind of thing. Okay. Signs of anybody I've seen fighting before. I, okay. I, yeah, I would say either history or nature. Um, Norvala, what are you doing? Um, I'm looking more for, like, through the ve- vegetation that's there. Um, maybe seeing if it's been trampled or if it was removed by tools or water kind of thing. Okay, sure. Uh, either a nature or a survival check would be fine there. Uh, Cedric? Uh, I'm just going to kind of keep like a wide eye for any potential like ambush. Okay. I feel like we got a big caravan. Sure. So the off chance that something perception. comes at us. Perception. And cow. Oh, oh. Uh, gonna look for tracks. Tracks specifically? Give me a survival yep. check. All right, Tyne, what'd you get? 12. A 12, all right. Norvala? At 15. 15. Segric? 21. 21. Callum? 19. 19. Yeah, so with your uh, accumulated stuff here, um, there's just, there's not a whole lot of, like, history to bring into the discussion in, in this spot, Tyne. Um, however, you do concur with uh, Norvala when Norvala states that this has definitely been made by uh, some sort of cutting tools. And an edge was used to lop these plants off and it was done recently um callum you find some larger humanoid tracks not large enough that you you're thinking giant or ogre or anything like that but definitely tracks that you specifically being from the orc basher clan have seen a lot of in your lifetime um you would very easily recognize these as orc tracks nearby and as Everyone's kind of regrouping after doing their own little bits and pieces of scouting here. Um, as they, as you guys make your way up to Segric, who's kind of now crouched up ahead of you a little bit, but not too far. As um, since you guys have kind of spread away from the caravan, um, following the different signs, and you, Segric, following um, what you thought to be like some sort of sound. Um, that you began to investigate. You guys find yourselves up more towards the top of this hill. And from here, Cedric, you kind of hold up a hand, stopping everybody behind you as they uh, come up, as you are now looking down on a couple of trees that um, are very sporadic out here to begin with, but that have been cut down and laid down And behind these trees, behind it for the caravan, um, it'd be in front of the trees for you guys being up on top of the hill. 
you can see a small group of orcs. And this group of orcs, the thing that has you the most alarmed, Cedric, uh, with your 21 perception, you can definitely see as um, resting on these fallen trees, it appears that they have a set of ballista. Like, oh, shit. like a pair. Well, okay, I think we gotta go take care of that right away. <laughs> a little bit further uh -oh. down the hill, you can see what appears to be another group in hiding down behind a, a little bit of like a dirt ledge that this hilly area provides for them but where this height advantage that you're at allows you to see them at this downward angle to give you guys okay. a little bit better idea of what you're looking at here um, there's a, a rock up towards the top of the map that is where you guys would be right now. And okay, this, uh... and you guys did make your checks, so the uh, the caravan is not quite there yet. Okay. It, it you says say they're kind of right like here, here but they're not. Okay. Good you say help. we're kind of like right up here, you said? Yes. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Hmm. Well, I think those blisters got to be the first things to go. Yeah. So, like I said, the uh, this stuff isn't quite here yet. Mm -hmm. Let me go ahead and hide it for now, too. Yeah, so if you guys want to, uh, you guys should all have tokens now, too. You want to drag them out on the map. They're just kind of hiding over here behind this rock. Tokens are cool. Oh, did it not? Oh, no. It waited it not to save. Oh, no. Well, go ahead and use that for now. I'll, I'll see, if I can get now. This, yeah. see if I can get this fixed. What are we using for now? Just drag your, your token out there and whatever shows up. Just use that for now while I try to fix this and you guys hatch a bit of a plan. Okay, which rock are we behind? Uh, the one um, which one kind of up behind. here. Yep. <clears throat> How does one drag their token? Oh, okay. You just click and drag. Oh, How it's under the, it? there's like the, yep, there's like the tab in the top right called journal. If you click on that. Oh, hey. Well then, so hmm. I mean, my first <laughs> my first desire is just to rush on in, but that's probably not a good idea because there is an uh, awful lot of these guys. Probably not. Let's see how many: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Around 15 or so. Okay, so that gives us what? Like, four each? That's easy. Um. Like I was saying, I think our first objective should be getting rid of these big old ballistae before they can be used on us. Or our caravan, more specifically. Uh, obviously... Obviously, I don't want to get hit by one. I feel like one of those will take me out cold. Yeah, um, no, I definitely don't want to. So. 
Yes. Now, uh, Mademoiselle Tyne, um, mm -hmm. you got some magical capabilities with those knitting needles of yours, right? I I do. What are you What are you thinking? Do you think there's any uh, tool in your magical arsenal that could uh, maybe set those things ablaze? Well, I do know Firebolt. Or if we wanted to have a little bit more fun, use up a little bit more yarn, I could cast Fireball. I think that would be quite delightful. I think it would be as well. I'll I'll get to I'll pull some orange out and get to knitting quickly here. Oh, I think I got my yeah. Uh, where would you like oh. me to direct? Oh no. <laughs> there. Which um, which place? So that's all I got my. Best? I think the best possible spot would be right here in between. Right here in between where this where this fine gentleman is standing. I think so. I'm going to turn over to Callum and be like, Now you, I think you are much like me. I think you like getting into the fray of things. So after that fireball goes off, uh, how about uh, you and I go rush on in and have a, a good old time? That sounds like my kind of party. Oh my word, I turned Russian. I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Sometimes you should, should have heard a previous character's accent. I was all over the place. Um, Is that where you're thinking for the fireball? Oh yeah, that would be perfect. Um, and then to Norvala, I'm just gonna be like, and you, little lady. Um, sorry, I gotta find. Be you. safe. <laughs> be safe, and uh, give us a little bit of cover, and make sure uh, those guys down low got a point into like these guys down here uh if you have any uh atoms and spells and whatnot in your arsenal uh to keep them held back just do the best you can all right ready all right break Okay, I will go ahead and throw out Fireball then, towards that spot. Ooh. It All is right. 8d6 fire damage. Alright, and what's your spell saving DC? Because I believe there are six guys that need to make it. Yes, yep, looks like so the Spell saving DC is a 16, okay, and it is a dexterity throw, or it is a dexterity save. While you do that on that. Okay, well, as the fireball hits the ground and um, erupts across... Um, this, this small part of the field here two of them managed to kind of like cover themselves using the uh, using the ballista to take a, a brunt of the explosion How, uh, however the rest of them are, uh, are not as fortunate um, this guy here and this guy here make the save the rest okay. of them failed <laughs> Quite miserably. And are the ballista oh, yeah. made of wood? Uh, the bu the ballista are made of it looks like some wood, but also a lot of uh, metal pieces, and it appears as though, well, uh, from here it'd be kind of hard to tell. Okay. Okay. It just says it ignites flammable objects in the area that aren't being worn or carried. I mean, regardless, so. it definitely did a number on them. Okay. Perfect. So what was the total damage? That'll that'll depict a lot of what happens to these ballista. Ten. Twenty. Four. Six. Seven, 
29. 29 points of damage? Okay. Yes. So... Or wait, hang on. He made the save. And he made the save. <laughs> Just wipe these guys out. Everyone that failed, uh, they are not looking very alive anymore. Um, <laughs> they are the two, not quite alive. The two that um, made the save, they are looking barely alive right now. Okay. Um, the ballista seemed to have taken um, a decent chunk of damage. However, the thing you do notice is that... Um, Whatever the um, the strings on this are made out of, they did not catch on fire. Mm, okay. Interesting. I guess they probably have a little bit of durability to this. Dur durability to them. Oh my god. <laughs> Starts like durableness. And I was like, what's the word? Uh, at this point, I need everyone to roll initiative. Yes. Roll it for these two. Uh, the the two that are left, you know, quite reasonably, are very panicked at the moment. Um, <laughs> Our fucking ballistas just exploded. Yeah, very um, <laughs> very confused as to what's going Holy on. Holy shit! Um, Ooh. I gotta move you guys down for a second so I can give you a turn order. I'm sorry. You guys can oh, put yourselves okay. right back. Oh, and Tyne, you have a you have a token now. If you want to redrag yourself out there, let me actually. Oh. Just. Ooh. So many bad things just happened. What happened? Oh, I forgot that I have a gaming mouse, and so uh, I accidentally hit the back button that's oh. on the mouse. Oh, gotcha. There, I yeah, I, I low key hate gaming there. mice. Oh, I love them. <laughs> okay, thank you. Appreciate All right. it. Uh, I hate it. So... It takes a while to get used to, but my old man brain. <laughs> um, okay, so this one was. A 12, this one 17. All right. Um, Callum, what did you have for initiative? You are muted, by the way. <laughs> Sorry, had a conversation. 24. <laughs> that, 24. Hey, hey. Let's go. Callum was ready to go. Segric. 21. Hey, you weren't far behind. Uh, <laughs> Norvala? I'd be a sick. Ooh. And Tyne. I just like to, you know, wait till the end to have my say five. <laughs> I think you just wanted it's that. It's very fitting, though. I think you just wanted that. No, no, sorry, that. six. No, five. Sorry. I was looking at the wrong base. Five. All right. right. Well, in that case, right now, Callum, you're up. And do we want to re reposition ourselves back where we were? Oh yeah. Callum was too excited as soon as the fireball went off he was just like yeah he was like i'm going this <laughs> i'm in <laughs> um i don't hold on can i make it there? i don't think i can make it there. so you've got a base speed of 25 but then you're a barbarian so i believe your barbarian speed is 35 35 yes so and I don't know if I'm talking about my butt, but I think there's also it might oh it might be a barbarian path. I think there's something that lets you like dash as a bonus action. 
Nope, I don't have that. Um, Path of the Elk. Okay, yep. If you do Totem Bear and then uh, do Path of the Elk. Okay. So 35, it gets you to about that. right there. Or or there. Or there. Right or there. there. Right there. there. That'll do it. And then you can either use the rest of your movement to run up and get into melee. You won't be able to attack them because you have to use your action to dash. Or as a barbarian, you do have um, javelins. So you could huck a javelin at somebody. Being level 11, you can huck a javelin at them twice. Um, can I rage before I chuck a javelin? Absolutely, you can rage before you chuck yeah, a absolutely. javelin. Okay, well, Helm's going to rage. And, but this orangish mist kind of like blows around him as like a weird wind kind of picks up out of nowhere um and he's gonna yell as he chucks a javelin at this this dude right there all right as soon as i find my dice <laughs> that do be an important part of role First one is a bat one. Oh no! Well, oh man, time to roll on the table. That's the second that one I've gotten. The nat one table of doom. I need you to roll another d twenty. Well, I'm not rolling that one. Fair enough. I don't blame you. It's on timeout. (laughs) What'd you get? A 20. Oh, on the table? No. Well, let's see. But you got, <laughs> you got, you got lucky. Your attack simply misses. Nothing, nothing oh. bad happens. Oh, oh my goodness. It's still rough to roll yeah, no, 20 on the table. Like, you die. <laughs> no, no, no. That's not one I... again. You get two not ones. That is rough unfortunate. things happen. But yeah, okay. no. So the first one's just a miss. Okay. But you do have a second attack. Gonna roll for that second attack. That is a uh, fourteen plus eight. Yeah, that definitely that definitely hits this guy. Okay. And then a javelin is a that doesn't hit him. It's a one. Yep. 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 Perfect. Eight plus three. Plus 11 points of damage um segric as you're like just starting into your run you watch as um th- this dwarf um just runs up screaming as this mist comes off of him hucks one javelin and it misses quickly like grabbing another one and hucking it and you watch as this guy gets hit through the chest with it and just flies over this little edge right here and disappears behind it. Oh my god. That's beautiful. It's just like Javelin completely impaled through this orc's chest. You hear like a, like not even a cry of pain, just like a and he just (laughs) yep, as he flies backwards. Well, alrighty then. And with that, I believe it's your turn, Segric. Yep, all right. So, uh, I can't really match the intensity of that, but <laughs> I can try. You can certainly <laughs> try. <laughs> hey, that's uh, my I think thing. I'm just gonna, Give it your best shots. I get to say that. Uh, I'm just going <laughs> to run up here. I should have worn, I have a shirt that Christian got me for my birthday a few years ago that has a D20 on it. It just says, you can certainly try. Hell yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I'm just going to run up here to this edge. I am going to uh, take line of sight, and I'm going to shoot out a magic missile at this remaining fella right here. Okay. So, yeah, no saves or anything, so what's the damage? Yep. Uh, so far, not good. So like okay, I would say at the restaurant, what's the damage? 
uh, 11 altogether. 11 altogether. And uh, yep. Callum, in turn, as you, like, snap your attention towards the one to the side, he watches these, like, three twisting missiles of pure magical energy just, like, <laughs> into this guy as his head is, like, rocked back and forth. The last one just, like, slamming him into the side of the, the ballista over here as he just drapes over it, no longer moving. We all have ways of taking care of business. <laughs> uh, I don't. All right. I don't want to mark that this man is dead on the list. Well, I guess we just. I don't know. Can I delete him? I guess we just we just skip past him. I suppose. Yep, we just skip him. I don't know how to do it. So boop boop. Uh, Norvala, it's your turn. Okay. I just I have a quick question. Yep. Well, don't do that. Um. So we don't we we don't see anything else, right? Uh, no, you do see so these guys down guys? here. And they didn't come running. When well, not they haven't. Phone? They haven't yet. They haven't really had a chance to. They yet. haven't. They haven't had a chance to like fully react. I was gonna have like a round okay. go on up here, and that's them being like, "Oh shit!" Because it's only this is all happening in six seconds. So it's like your right. fireball went off, and then those two got jumped from a distance, um, and they're all dead by the time these guys are looking up from the fireball, being like, "What just happened?" Okay, fair enough. Okay, um, Normala's gonna hold her action this round. Okay. Um, she's never seen orcs before, and she's just kind of frozen. Okay. That whole fight or flight, but she chose to freeze, so. <laughs> okay. A little bit of fear sets in. How far away are the guys at the bottom of the hill? They're quite a ways away, right? Yeah, they're probably a good ways away. Um, I can, I can measure real quick. So from you, yeah, 150 feet is gonna. 145 is the closest. Oh, it's gotta take us like five rounds to get there. I know. Our stubby little <laughs> legs. Well, you know them I running towards you. I can only move 15 and... feet. So we are on you, Tyne. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of slide down here, kind of start moving toward everybody else, and that's all I'm gonna do. You can well, you can dash with your action. That's fair. You could get another 15 feet with your little grandma legs. <laughs> little grandma feet. Uh, I'll go ahead and just dash down here then all right and that'll be my turn yeah so at the end of this round um all the orcs up here are just gone they're they're gone. Dead, deceased just um, wiped out <laughs> and uh you guys can now see as the orcs down here um do begin to stir um very surprised by everything that's just happened and they are now going to uh begin making their way up um but they are gonna have to roll to join the initiative so okay well if they all roll like that they'll go after me a couple of them <laughs> okay it's so... a fucking grandma <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, uh, Tyne has done the most damage so far. <laughs> More damage than uh, Callum and Cedric and combined have done. Yeah, yeah. Do they? <laughs> just. Whew. All right. Um, let me type these in real quick.
All right. Oop. Wrong button, sorry. Okay, there we go. So we are back to you, Callum, as none of them <laughs> rolled high enough to beat you, so. Uh, do I have to walk around this ledge here? No, it's like five foot. It's just... It's just they're showing that, like, you are heading downhill, pretty much. There are some ledges, but it's, like, five foot tall, so you're good. You would probably hop over them pretty easily. Is there still fire by the ballistas? Uh, no. So the wood wasn't, like, a predominant enough piece of the ballista. Um, or the wood that is showing is, like, treated against catching on fire. So it's not like actively inflamed. Are they in working order? I have to get a little bit closer, but they seem to still be put together. Fucking fire. Uh, I'm gonna move right there. That's twenty five feet. Okay. Um this thing is loaded. And my move this thing is loaded oh. and it looks like it's good to go. Canist I reach these guys with the ballista? There's one way to find out. <laughs> We've never fired a ballista before. <laughs> Absolutely not. How do you go but about firing this ballista? <laughs> <laughs> well, currently, in his raged out state, he's going to look for a trigger. That's all he's got. So there is like a um, a lever on the back. Uh, lever. It, it seems a a little bit more complicated than just like pulling the lever to release it. But you can either um, you can either uh, tempt fate and roll with disadvantage here, or you can make an uh, an intelligence check to see if in this raged out state you can figure out how to operate. The ballista that will be at disadvantage <laughs> because uh, you're in a rage right now trying to investigate a ballista. <laughs> I'm gonna just take it with the disadvantage. Okay. I'm gonna see how that goes. All right. Are you kidding me? What? <laughs> what was it? Sorry, you cut out. Twenty and a two. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Tonight is not my night. Um, that is my third nat one tonight. Oh, oh okay. No. Oh, no, that's fun. On the ballista. So that's another dice going into the uh, dice jail. So we're not rolling on the nat one table of doom because it's a little bit different with the, uh, with the ballista, the ballista here. So um, this is no ordinary ballista. As this is a what appears to be some sort of like three shot firing mechanism here. And mm -hmm. as you um, pull as you pull the lever back, instead of um, it releasing one of these as an aimed attack, it releases all three of the ballista bolts at the same time, and I need you to make a strength saving throw. <laughs> You have advantage on this. Oh, you do? Because you're raging. Raging. That's more like it. Uh, 17 plus 8. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. um, the ballista, like, tries to move backwards on you, and almost <laughs> like you're shouldering oh, yeah. a firearm. You just hold this ballista in place. You do take... Uh, that's reduced, so two points of bludgeoning damage from the ballista as all three of these bolts fire at the same time, launching the ballista, what would have been several feet backwards instead, into your shoulder where you hold it steady. Um, is there anything else you'd like to do with your turn? You have your uh, bonus action. Um, there is there is a um, like a little... Um, like woven, not really a basket, more of like a, a fence that has more ballista bolts in it in between the two 
Ballista. It does require a bonus action to reload. Well, I can't really do anything else, though. I might as well reload it anyway. Okay. Um, so for your, for each bonus action spent, you can put like one bolt in. If you use your action, you can put two bolts in. So you can get one bolt reloaded into this ballista. All right. That is what I will do then. All right. Segret. Sorry. I forget that my mic doesn't All pick right. up high pitch. You're good. No worries. I mean, that's just Discord in general. So, um, I'm going to try and pop down. Whoop. Whoop. Sorry, I guess, since I was here. But, whoop. If I can land about right there. Okay. Um, I don't, cause I don't know if that's like, uh, impose any like extra movement for hopping down or something. Nah, you like jumped um, onto a small boulder and then off onto the ground. Okay. So then. Here's that was yeah, so like 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, and I'm going to await some of these orcs coming on up, so that way I can, uh... I imagine they'll be coming up after Callum, and then I can hopefully, uh, get a good, like, flank attack on them, so... Okay. Um, that is all I'm going to do. That actually reminds me. All three of those bolts did fire. Um, so go ahead and give me, um... Uh, a roll at disadvantage, uh, Callum, and I'll roll the other two at disadvantage. For attack? Yep. Yeah, well, just Do roll two. Anything? Just roll two d twenty. Give me the lower number. Uh, they're both eight. Both eight. So one of them that I rolled actually does hit one of the orcs. <laughs> <laughs> And the orc takes uh you watch as one of the orcs is like uh for flavor just like just cresting up over the edge of this and catches a ballista <laughs> bolt like right through his face and just falls back over um, as he takes 18 points of piercing damage from a giant ballista bolt that smacks <laughs> him in the face. Oh. Thank you for reminding me of that. Um, okay, so which one is this? That's this one. So he's gonna... 40 and then dash to get to here. Which one's this? This one is going to same thing. 40 and then dash. Getting to there. Next is this guy. Same thing. Just dashing to get 80 feet. Oh, that was only 75. And this guy. Same thing. 80 feet. All right, Norvala. With words that my mother said to me the night before we left, filling my head with doubt, I, I decide to do my best to pick myself up and I'm going to run to um, Pine and quickly ask her would you like to travel far again? Would you like to 
travel with me. Sure, darling. Okay. So I'm going to Dimension Door. Pick up Grandma here. And I would like to take us over to this tree here. Sorry. This tree here. Um, I don't know if that. Yeah. With Dimension right. Door, yeah. you can teleport anywhere on this map right now. Anywhere on this map. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, just, no. I yeah. was like, well, you have 300 feet? I'm fucking... Five. <laughs> 500 feet. Yeah. Oh, so, 500 feet? This... Oh my god. Yeah, I can go 500 feet. Yeah. I don't know how um, tall this tree is, if we can stand under it, or if it's... Oh yeah, you want to be under the tree over here? Yeah, can we be like under this tree, kind yeah. of hiding? Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. Like behind the trunk a little bit? Yeah, that way cover. we can sure. try to catch some of these guys before they come up. Absolutely. And then anything with your bonus action or movement? Um, um, no, I'm just going to leave it there for now. All right. Tyne, you are now uh, a little bit behind a tree, got a little bit of cover going on here. Um, you just moved faster than you have in the last 150 years. Um, well, I guess except for yesterday, uh, when, you did this, yesterday. when you did this once before. <laughs> what would you like to do? Um, you know, I think I'm going to knit up a little blanket, and I'm going to... Pass sleep on Ooh. twenty mile radius. Oh, 20, I, not twenty foot radius. <laughs> twenty mile radius. Holy shit! Twenty mile radius from here. Everyone takes a nap. <laughs> twenty feet of a point you choose within range. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, let me give you a little. <laughs> Sorry, I'm still laughing about that. Is uh, it twenty foot cube? 20 foot radius. Oh, so it's a radius. circle? Yes. Um, this will work. I think if you were foot. to target, like, right, like, here. Oh, yeah, there we go. You could do that, or, I mean, you could do this over here, too. You target those guys down there. Here, let me oh, move, let me right move this here. to the map layer gonna, so that you can see. I was, I was well thinking more, like... I can't click. I don't know how to click. Uh, you just have to be on the select, and you click and hold, and it'll ping. Yeah, uh, if you right-click, you can drag around the okay, map. Okay, I and was then, uh, like, centered right here with like, oh. this guy. Will that get me all three? Yeah, or yeah. you can put it right here, a... and you can get all four of them. All oh, four of them. Yeah, I like that better. Do okay, that. I gotta figure out how this spell works. It's a weird one. Roll, roll 5d8. It depends. How many points? Well, it depends first. What level do you cast it at? Because you do. Oh yeah, yeah. What well, level? Because um, you cast it at a higher have, level. You have up to sixth level, right? At level 11. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go ahead and cast it as a fifth level spell. Okay. Which I believe adds a lot of d8s to that. Seven. I don't know if nine, I actually own enough eleven. D8s. You'd have d8. So okay. you can either roll multiples or uh, you can roll here on roll 20, too. You can, just that. you can just click the dice button. And then... I can roll how many d8? You'll roll 13. 13 of them. 13. So I've got five. I'll roll these five first. Okay. Yeah, five, five, and three I'll works. keep track of the... Holy I can keep track okay, of the number for you. Okay, seven times four is twenty-eight. Plus five 28. is thirty. Thirty-three. Thirty-three. Okay. And yep. so that was. That's five. So. And 
And then six would be 39. Five yep. would be 44. 44. And then four would be 48. 48. Two would be 50. And then three 50. would be 53. 53. And three and, more. Um, plus 18. 53 plus 18. Because it's 360. Alright, so that's 71. So I can hit up to. I can affect up to pe- 71 hit points. Yeah, so it'll find the lowest amount of hit points first, then it'll, like, so say if there's, like, an orc with 10 hit points, that guy will go to sleep. Then you'll subtract 10 from the 71, then you have 61. Then it'll uh-huh. find the next lowest, and then it'll uh-huh. it'll do that until it'll... it can't make anyone fall asleep anymore. Yeah. You know what? That doesn't show up very well. We're just going to put pink on everybody that fell asleep, which is everyone. Oh my god! <laughs> yes! So, this grandma walks out on the field, knits a fireball, kills two-thirds of the people Six, by the ballista, yeah, like, then gets teleported under a tree, looks over at him and is like, here's a blanket, knits a blanket in record-breaking time, throws it up in the air, and these four just conk out. Just instantly, they're asleep. Uh, you needed... Uh, they have 16 hit points, so uh, you needed 64. <laughs> They're all napping. That's awesome. You could have almost thrown a fifth amazing. one in there. <laughs> almost. When I you mean, said 53 and good. you had three more, I was like, ooh, it's going to be close. And then 18. <laughs> yep, three sixes. Well, when I rolled four sevens on that first one, I was like, yeah, that first yeah. Yeah. real good. It was a real good roll. I've role. never seen the so, sleep right. spell be so useful before. I, me either. Never. Well, Actually, no, that's not true. I was say if Christian's still here, if you remember the time our friend Vicky fucking pulled a fucking sleep spell that literally saved our friend from dying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> uh, that's that's Tyne's turn. Um, yeah, that will, that will this guy's gonna turn. sleep for his turn, and so is this guy. I I cast that as a level 5 oh I missed two of them but they're both in that group there so I I thought there was a couple threes too I didn't put the threes on there but they're also there so if they get a turn let me know yep but this is the top of round 3 or 4 yep Uh, round 3 round 3 today okay cool so Callum it is your turn well, because there are now targets closer to him, he is going to leave the ballista and land right here. If that's close enough for melee, right? You want to know the craziest part about Callum's last there. turn? Because what? of that nat one and the ballista kicking back, it did damage to him, which kept his rage up. Ah. Uh. If you hadn't that <laughs> one, you'd have true. lost your rage. I hadn't done that. That's oh actually crazy. That. So you're still raging. That's you're so still funny. pissed. And now your shoulder hurts a little bit, and this orc happens to be in your path. <laughs> as far as you're concerned, this orc is responsible. <laughs> yep. Um. Yeah, it's his ballista, of course. <laughs> <laughs> um. He is gonna grab his maul from his back. And swing it. All right, roll the hit. I cannot believe this. So I get advantage, right? No, I so I rolled no, so I rolled two because I'm I'm hitting him twice. Okay. I rolled a nat one and a nat twenty. <laughs> you are just the extremes tonight. That's it. You might as well just have a coin. You're just flipping. We'll say, we'll say that the nat we'll say the nat twenty was first. So go ahead and roll your crit damage, your crit and everything, and then we'll roll for what your nat one was. Um, that was my mall. Two d six.
That's 12 that I rolled. Is that plus your strength, or is that just what you got on the die? Uh, no, that's plus That's plus everything. I added everything together. Okay. And then um, did you but add then your... I did okay. So then... So then your crit damage? The 20... Is the, the highest I can roll on the dice, yep. right? Yep. Yep. So it's 24. Yep, 24 points of damage, which uh, gets rid of this man's neck. Um, he's also, now just, just a as a reminder, Callum... Um, as a barbarian, I don't know if you're you're fully barbarian, but at level nine you get your brutal critical, which means you get to add an extra uh, oh, die yeah. to the damage. Yeah, that's right. I for, get to add uh, an extra die to the damage. For the um, for like the our homebrew thing, what I've what I've done in the past is you you don't add the the new dies like maximum. You just mm -hmm. roll. Yeah, you just roll that one, and you don't. Yep. Yep. All right, but then. Seeing that, I assume you would run up to this guy next. Mm -hmm. And now I need you to roll on the table. Now. <laughs> roll on the table of doom. A two. A two. The literal worst case scenario. You fall oh, down. No. So I have as four dice in dice jail now. So you run you <laughs> smash this guy's head into his shoulders and you take off running forward to go swing for this guy, and the guy you just smashed in falls sooner than you thought and you trip over him as um you're running towards the new guy sliding and falling on on your stomach and your maul tumbles out of your hand um landing in this space over here and like as you like start to like look up you have to wipe dirt out of your eyes and stuff and that is going to end your turn because of the nat one Oh. So that brings us to Segric. Uh, Segric, right now, you watched as Callum uh, made somebody's head one with their shoulders, and then now they have like tripped, ate dirt, and dropped their weapon. They're lying prone hey, on the ground that. in front of an orc. I feel that, that brother. Does, does um, that count as me getting hurt? <laughs> well, the round is far from over, and you're prone in front of an orc, so I have a feeling you don't have to oh, worry uh, about whether you get hurt or not. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm down for that. That's good. Yeah, it's until the start of your next turn. Yeah, when yeah. your next turn comes, if you haven't taken any damage, then you're raging. Oh, okay, okay. Um, There's one here. So I think a uh, funny little statistic. None of what? the orcs have attacked yet. No, they haven't. <laughs> they haven't had a chance to. They die. They die too fast. Um, oh my god, I have. I have something I want to do. But I'd, I think it's should, probably, probably more, more beneficial to it. It's probably more beneficial to just attack. Um, but it is something I could do, and it would be fun. Um, let me just look up. I think it's a, there's a spell I might, might want to cast. I just thought of this. Um, is it a radius? Ten foot square? Um, do you have like a ten foot square? Mm. Would that just be like, um, like if, Okay, it's that. Okay, so never mind. This would not be as good as I thought it would, so I'm not gonna do it. Okay. Um, because I I was hoping it would be a little bigger because I wanted to I wanted to affect these three guys right here, uh, but instead. Uh, um, let's see. Hold on. Was... I'm I'm a nice demon, so it doesn't have to be on the grid. Let's see. Yeah, you can't quite. There's no way to get yeah, all three of them with it. Almost. But, yeah, and it's also close. just yeah, almost, but. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use one of my fighting spirits to give me five temporary hit points. Okay. Uh, and I get advantage uh, advantage on all attack rolls this turn. Okay. Um, I am going to uh, come down. I'm gonna leap down, descend upon this fella. With a good old plunging, plunging uh, strike. I unsheathed my katana. As <laughs> okay. They say. Um. This is probably going to hit. I don't think these guys have that good of an AC. Um, 27? Oh, yeah. Yes, that's going to hit. <laughs> okay. Um, and it is... So five... One of these guys got hit and killed by a stray ballista bullet. <laughs> their their uh, AC isn't the greatest. Uh, let's see, so five... Well, no, I mean, in, in lore-wise, he was coming up over the top. It was more of a <laughs> circumstance thing. Um... <laughs> 
I don't know if these guys have any resistance to thunder or lightning damage, but I believe altogether, 7, 13. Uh, altogether, it's 20 damage. Yeah, so you just run up behind this guy, like, run your katana through his back, drag it out to the side as he just, like, falls half apart, slumping onto the ground. All writhing. Right, then, using my... Using my remaining movement, I'm going to come down to this dude. And I'm right. going to do another attack, and this time I'm going to use my uh, sneak attack because I have advantage. Go for it. Ooh. That might not be so good. Even with advantage, that is only a 13. A 13 will not hit, unfortunately. Ah, oh, dang. Okay. This, one, this one's seeing you uh, uh, oh fillet his friend is like, ah, oh, not me, and like just gets his his uh, sword over in time to glance it off. Yeah. Also, so I, I use like a dice rolling app so that way it's not just clattering all on my desk. I don't have a lot of... So I have all my dice like together. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I roll them all at the same time and I rolled uh, a shit ton of... I don't know if you can see it, but I rolled a shit ton... No, you can't. I rolled a shit ton of ones for Oof. damage. So it would have been a bad hit anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so it all... It was not destined to hit that guy. So... All right, but then uh, that is all I'm going to do. I am all done. Okay. Uh, well, he's dead. Uh, so this guy here is going to take his attacks at advantage at the dwarf lying on the ground in front of him. Uh, that is... Oh, that's going to be a crit. Oh, no. <laughs> Don't worry, Callum. You get, you're going to stay in rage. Don't worry. 16 points of piercing damage. That's, that's uh, good news. Reduced to 8, though, because you're a barbarian and you're raging. And the second attack um, is... That's a total of a 19. Uh, glancing blow. Glancing blow. Damn. Four. Got a decent AC. Six. So, 10, reduced to 5 because you're raging, reduced to 2 because it was a glancing blow. A glancing blow. So you take damage, but it's hardly any damage that matters. And that is that boy's turn. Yeah, this guy, after like glancing your sword off to the side, is going to try to make a retaliation attack. That's not going to hit. And... Oh, uh, that's a dirty 20. Cedric, dirty 20. Oh, sorry, me. Yep. Oh my god, my brain was like, yep, uh, dirty 20 will hit. Okay. Uh, I was wait, just saying, Cedric, on that oh, one. I have, I have a reaction. I've remembered this. I use okay. uh, my defensive duelist. I get to add my, um, I can't remember how much do I get to add. Um, I can add my dexterity to my AC, so I can add five, so it does not hit. It so doesn't. My AC oh. turns up to twenty-two. Okay, well, never yep. mind the eleven damage then. Yep. As yep. Uh, I do not have my reaction anymore, but it's like <laughs> it's like centimeters away from your face as you like just bring your sword up in between the attack, like pushing it off to the side, getting ready to uh, yeah repost, um, and that guy's dead. Um, <laughs> Norvala, your turn. There are four sleeping orcs at the bottom of the hill. There are two that oh, are no. alive for a little bit longer above you on the hill. Um, and at this point in time now, nearing the end of this round, um, right now barreling towards you on the back of one of the musts that was like tied up behind the wagon is um, Axel. Uh, just tearing towards these sleeping orcs right at the moment. Uh, we'll probably get there this next round. Okay. Alright. I would like to cast um, Cloud of Daggers. Okay. Between the two that are closest to each other. Okay. My little circle. Wait, okay, no, no. It's fine. No, no, sorry, down the sleeping one. I don't know why I want Oh, okay. 
Um, oh, what a way to wake up! I don't, I don't think you yeah. can hit both of them, but you can hit Just one see? or the other. The two if on the left them, side, they will wake up. Yeah, because that's that would be like right in between them. Oh it yeah, be... it's only five. Yep, but you could put it right on his head. You know what? Let's do it. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> what level did you cast it at? I cast it at level two. Okay. So OG level. forty-four, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, forty-four slashing. Just automatically. Uh, two, four, eight, eleven. Eleven points as this orc wakes up screaming in pain. Um, so wakes up, blender, yeah, wakes, wakes up in the blender. Yeah, wakes up in a blender. Yeah, basically, is, yeah. Is still lying prone on the ground because he just got woke up. Um, and there's just daggers swirling around cutting into him right now so he's screaming in pain but uh his friends don't seem to hear him ah oh, i've been there buddy <laughs> you're just being ground up by daggers and you're just like friends help and they're just not listening <laughs> i'm the friend in that situation <laughs> uh anything else with your turn or all bonus action movement speed Um, no, that'll be it. All right, time. Okay, um, I am going to knit up a little Beholderkin here. And I'm going to place it. Uh, Let's put it. Put it right here. What is it? Sorry. I don't know if you want to mark that. It's a beholder kin. I'm using summon aberration. Oh, okay. Um. Let's see what they've got. Um. Here. Oh, maybe. Okay, that one doesn't want to go on the map. Neither does that one. Cool, cool. Love to see it. Love <laughs> to see it. There we go. What size creature is it? Uh, it is. Uh, um, we're gonna say it's hovering instead of standing. Um, also. I'm currently trying to find it. Um, it doesn't. Medium. It's a medium sized creature? Okay. Yeah, yep. medium sized creature. Yeah, so he's just chilling right there. But yeah, now there's a behil- beholder in between the two um, uh, sleeping orcs. Okay. Cool. Um, that will end my turn. Okay. However, my aberration goes directly after me. Gotcha. So he will go ahead and, oh, sorry. He's supposed to be right here. Where at? Sorry. Yeah. Right here. Okay. There you go. Okay. And then he will go ahead. It is a cool spell. This is a super cool spell. I'm just trying to look at what all he can do real quick here. Okay, I think he can only cast Eye Raid. Eye Ray? That's what it looks like. Yeah, the Eye Ray. Yeah, the Eye Ray. So it is a ranged spell attack, so he'll have to cast it at... Disad- oh no, your spell attack modifier to hit. 1d8 plus 3 plus the spell's level psychic damage. So do I have to roll to hit with that? I, I don't know. It just says your spell attack modifier to hit. Yeah, yeah. So your 
uh, it's it's okay. rolling to hit is the same as you making a spell attack. Okay. Is all that means. Okay, and then I have to... Ugh. And then since it's a ranged spell attack, I have to make it at... Well... Yes, you do have to make it a disadvantage. If I make it at the guy directly in front of me. Nope. No matter this one. No matter where you make it, if you have somebody within five feet of you, you have disadvantage on a range attack. Oh, okay, disadvantage on yep. range attack. Oh, is that what it is? Okay. Yep. Oh, okay. I thought it was only if you attack that guy. Okay, so that's an eight plus eight, so sixteen to hit. Uh, sixteen. Yeah, that'll hit. Okay, and so then it's 1d8. 1d8 plus 3 plus the spell's level. So 8 plus 3 it's 11. is 11 plus the spell's level, which is 4. So 15 points of damage. This boy wakes up to a, a, a laser cutting through him, and he is like very very messed up and is now looking up into the eyes of a, like a miniature beholder um yeah cool That's a pretty I'm, good gonna, sign. I'm gonna attack him again oh multi-attack oh no yeah multi-attack yep, uh, makes, makes a every... number of attacks equal to half the spell's level rounded down so it's a level four yep. so he can make two Dang. So level six, he can make three. three and at level, at level eight, he can make four. That's wild. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's not as good. That's only a 12 to hit this time. 12 does not hit, unfortunately. Yeah. Or fortunately unfortunately. for this poor work. Or unfortunately, actually. It would have been better to just put him out of his misery. As he is shitting <laughs> bricks right now. Poor, poor dude. All right. He's not having a good time. Oh, so. and that was a level four spell. That guy's oh. still sleeping. That guy's dead. So it is this guy here's turn. Um, yeah, he's gonna stand up and try to hit the aberration in front of him. That's uh, an old, no thirteen. No. And I think they have an AC of 15. Yeah, he has oh, an AC. And uh, 24. That will hit it. Oh, just barely. For just barely 12 points of slashing damage. Okay. He's still there, so. All right. Uh, and the other guy is going to like stand up and then fall back down dead. Oh, wait. Which, which guy was that? Uh, the guy in the blender. Oh, in the blender! <laughs> yeah, he's, he didn't have... There's no... You don't even have to roll. <laughs> my, my man dies. Oh, my you literally, God. You literally have to not roll all once. <laughs> That's it. So, oh my he God. stands up and immediately just... <laughs> and falls back down on the ground. Uh, oh, cut into pieces. Bastard. And we're back to Cal. Was there the one more orc with a three? Oh, uh, it's one of the sleepy ones. Yep. So he doesn't get a turn. He's still sleeping. Okay. So I believe that lasts on, an hour? Second. A minute? Something um, like that. It lasts one minute. Okay. Or until they take damage. I feel like if you upcast it, not only should, should it last increase longer. the... Yeah, I think it should increase how long it lasts too because like a sleep spell is way cooler if it lasts for an hour than if it lasts for like one minute like it feels yeah. so situational then but if it's an hour i can see a lot of situations where that's useful yeah, i can see a lot of situations like, where I like can forcing that. the forcing the very very wounded fighter or barbarian to take a short rest you know like <laughs> you know <laughs> Uh, does it take an action to stand up? No, it takes half your movement to stand up. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. 
Callum's gonna stand up and try to hit this dude with his maul again. Well, your maul, you don't have possession. Not my maul, my axe. Gotcha. Sorry, so just like, all right. I'm gonna use flight. Go for it. Uh, that is another nat 20 and a, hold on, and a 13. So with oh, the yeah. blunt end of this axe, you take it swinging directly perpendicular to this man's head and take his head off, even though this is more of a bludgeoning weapon than it is a slashing weapon. His head just comes off. Um, yeah, your, your crit would have damaged, would have mutilated this boy. Um, <laughs> so yeah, what do you want to do with the rest of your turn? Um, you got another one right here for you. Yeah. Yeah. If you I move up, it to him? uh, it's only 10 feet of movement. So yeah. There. And then can I use that second one, or do I need to roll again? So, so yeah, you can use that, that second one, but you have advantage because you guys are flanking this uh, orc now, so. Oh, then I'll just I'll roll again. Um, would you believe me if I told you I got another nat 20? I knew you were going to do that. I don't know I don't know how, but in my head I was like, because I said advantage, she about to roll another natural 20. Uh, um, it was a nat 20 and an 18, so I think either way it was going to hit. So, um, you're like, <laughs> just have deflected this attack from this orc, right? And you're like looking around to see if Callum is okay, because they were just laying on the ground in front of another orc, Cedric, and uh, you don't see them there anymore, and you're like, oh shit, that could either be really good or really bad, and then you watch as the orc, like, in front of you drops to his knees, then onto his stomach, and you just see Callum standing there, blood covering the front of him, this is this big-ass grin on his face. <laughs> I was like, I need, to, yeah, I need to get this boy's Cheerios, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah, bonus action, movement, or that's all your movement. So you have a bonus action that's if you want to do anything. I can't do anything with a bonus action. All right. So. Uh, Segric, it is your turn. All right. Well, as far as I'm aware, um, let's see. Whoopsies. There's this fella down here being attacked by this beholder kin. This guy, these two guys are still asleep. The beholder's probably going to take care of this fella. Um... I just let them sleep. Do I just let them sleep their little heads away? No, I don't do that. <laughs> Didn't you say Axel was going to come in? Yeah, he hasn't made it yeah, there yet. Axel's on his way. He's oh, on okay. his way. I'll think... oh, just think, wait know, for I'm his gonna... entrance. I think I'm just going to... Whoop! I'm just going to come down here. And, um... Do I, do I dash? Do I might as well dash? Then... Yeah, yeah, I'm just going to get right here on the edge. Uh, and this is, yeah, probably, yeah, <laughs> noted it's Axel coming, and I'm like, oh, I can't take this away from him. <laughs> I'll just end my turn here. He's, like, so just off the map at this point in time. Alright, that's it for me. Alright. Uh, okay, they're gone. And they're gone. So, Norval, it's your turn already. Kill him. Okay. I am going to move my 25 feet. I think is here. Like that. And then that puts me. Oh, just out of range. And. I'm going to cast um, another Cloud of Daggers on this, on the middle guy. Oh, I'm not on the right side. On this guy? Okay, yeah. That's funny that it put the X on the Cloud of Daggers and not on 
the guy, but <laughs> anyway. <It is> funny. <laughs> All right. Uh, so four d four. Go ahead and roll. Or if unless you upcast it, because you can. Nope. I'm gonna. Okay. Nope. I'm gonna do it the same. All right. Four d four. Twelve. Twelve. Uh, yeah, this guy, like the last one, wakes up screaming in this whirlwind of blades. Um. <laughs> oh my god. Bonus action. Um. I'm gonna do. So what does it mean by adjacent foe? Uh, I mean adjacent foe is like uh, within five feet of you. Or five okay. feet of whatever the subject is. Of whatever the target is. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Um No, I'm just going to end my turn there. Okay. Time. All right, I'm going to knit up a little firebolt here. Okay. And I will cast it at... Well, firebolt to cantrip. This is the one. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were about to say a level. I Go ahead. My bad. <laughs> this is the guy that Norvala just cast her blades on, right? No, no, no. This guy oh. here. You can see the little square that on That guy? Him. Okay. Well, <laughs> then this guy is going to get hit with firebolts. The guy that got hit by the blades? Uh, no, I think she said this guy. This guy. Okay, gotcha. The last sticky one. So... Oh, this will be disadvantaged because they are prone. And it's a ranged oh, attack. Oh, that's true. Um, that's like the one downside. <laughs> yeah, the one. Well, the one thing about being prone, yes. Yeah, you know what? Okay. You know what? Though I'm gonna say it cancels out because they also can't use their dexterity to dodge it. So like that okay, really well, shouldn't play into their AC. Because because they are helpless. Like they're yeah, uh, like what's yeah they're it? incapacitated. incapacitated. So I'm gonna so say it cancels it out. So. Yeah, it cancels out. Okay. So what was that to hit? Either way, with disadvantage, he was an 18. Oh, yeah, that okay. still hits. 3d10. <laughs> so after after we debated all of that. Yeah, my, my bad. Because the first thing was like, well, they're laying down. But then I was like, well, but they also can't do anything. <laughs> all right, 3d10. So, four and four is eight, plus six is 14. 14. Uh, and this boy wakes up to s scorching fire on his body, and he looks very, very brutal. Perfect. And then... My aberration is going to miss its first attack because that's only a 10. Okay. And it doesn't have disadvantage anymore. Oh, it doesn't? No, because it stood up to attack. Oh, well, so they're not, not they're not prone anymore. Well, the first attack then is a 24. Oh, wait, no, I'm done. I'm sorry. It's a ranged attack. You're right. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. Range. That that's okay. my that's so my is, bad. Yeah, the so is an 18, 18 then, gotcha. And we will hit. Oh yeah, they're definitely dead. Okay. <laughs> they had they had one just hit shooting point. eye beams. Yeah, just left and right like crazy. Okay, and then I Yeah, I'm gonna have him move. This, this guy here has a cloud of daggers around him, right? Yep. You should be able to move him now, wherever you want him. Okay. 5, 10, 
30. Start dropping right there. Okay. He can move more than I can. And that will be my turn. Alright, and uh, this guy stands up Is it and a- dies. <laughs> <laughs> Cloud of daggers, man. <laughs> Cloud of daggers is a crazy spell. It's it's amazing. Um, I did not realize it was this powerful. Um, and at uh, the end of this round, beginning of the next, uh, Axel comes riding in on the back of one of the uh, must that was tied up to one of the wagons, and oh my god, crits on a javelin throw. At this guy here. Um, there's only a D6, so we'll see. Plus his strength. 17 points of damage. And it just hits one side of his ribs, comes out the other side of his ribs, and just pokes him in the ground. Oh my nice. god. Alright, well. Mission <laughs> Accomplished, everybody. You know what? The the new song started like right at the perfect time. Peaceful music. That was the perfect time. Yeah, (laughs) the peaceful music to start. Axel looks sad. Um, (laughs) he's he's happy that he got one, but he's like looking around at the rest of them, like, "You couldn't have saved more than one for me. You made me stay back and guard everyone, and then you kill all the motherfuckers while I'm back there." Well, to be fair, we needed you to take care of that last one. We couldn't have done it without you. You're damn right you did. And he's like, walked over and is like grabbing his javelin out of the orc. One fucking orc. You know, they really had us on the ropes. My father they really had us on the my ropes there. If he knew I only killed one fucking orc. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, as he's grabbing his stuff, as you guys start collecting... Uh, your own various objects from the uh, the battlefield in front of you. That's where mm-hmm. we're going to end tonight's session because we're a half yeah. hour over. <laughs> we are half hour over. Yeah. I have to write a note because there's something I want to do is when we start next time. So Likewise, I got a lot of stuff to write down. Yep. <laughs> so There's also something I'd like to do next round. Or next next. Session, Everyone so. make sure you take your notes. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, real quick, guys, um, if you want to see your names in Hylum, you guys know how to do it. Make sure you share, share Terrell from Hylum content. Make sure you add us so that I know that you've done it, and then use the hashtags uh, Tales from Hylum and TFH. Um, if you guys want to be more influential in the world of Hylum, make sure you join the Discord. That way... Um, you know, when we're going to have some community one shots and mini series, stuff like that. And you can get your name in the hat to join in on that. And then don't forget guys, because we have merch now and it's in, it's in the old merch store and you can do exclamation point merch and it'll pop up with the link to tales from Harlem.com, which is crazy that there's a tales from Harlem.com already, but that's the thing that exists. Here's the discord. Uh, if you guys want to hop in. And, um, you know, other than that, guys, I think that's going to do it for this session of this episode of Tales from Highland. Uh, stick around for the raid, guys. Uh, but we are going to sign off for the night. So have a good night, everyone. <laughs>